some special guests here and we actually have this is kind of the first detail t today where we have a special problem yeah um we've been experimenting with uh kind of like broadcast video with this set we have here we call it the kit andy came up with the kit andy rush and uh it's basically like a four thousand dollar set where you have the hd camera a mac Wirecast software and we're basically doing a little studio thing here and we've been doing it now we have like 52 episodes of dtlt today it's been a lot of fun Tim Owens kind of got the idea for DTLT and started experimenting. So when we saw both George Siemens and Stephen Downs saying that they were having issues with their video broadcasting and their Illuminate sessions or kind of their experimenting with a whole series of sessions, we were wondering if some of the stuff we're doing here may not be useful to them and if we might, as a group here at DTLT, want to help them produce their shows. And I'm going to flip over to the full screen so we can see everyone in here and we'll get the conversation started. So right. we should probably talk a little bit about what you all are looking for and what things have not worked out so far. <laughs> Do we have enough time for that? <laughs> you know, first thing, I, I think that... Sorry, is that coming through okay? Sorry, mm -hmm. yeah, yep, you're is that coming fine. through okay? Perfect. Ah, okay. Anyway, uh, okay. the first thing we've had, anyway, uh, issues, the first thing we've is, had uh, issues with is uh, obviously, video you know, online, doing video and audio uh, online uh, apparently requires a bit of expertise. And some of the tools we looked at, and we tried uh, Big Blue Button, which wasn't too bad uh, for about 20 people. Anything over 20 all of a sudden, and we ended up getting 63 people or so when the entire server just decided to uh, give up its spirit. And then we, uh, fortunately, we had Barry Dahl who was around that day, and he has a Fuse meeting license, and so we jumped into there, and it worked out not too bad. So uh, Steve and Dave and I said, oh, this is not, not so shabby. Let's try this again. So we dropped 70 bucks a month on a uh, 100-seat Fuse license, so we decided, well, we'll each use it for different purposes. Why not? And uh, that promptly uh, turned to crap uh, the next time we tried that. So uh, we're sort of poking around. Uh, this last week, or uh, this, when was it? Yesterday, um, as I was whining online, uh, Julia mentioned that she had an option at Brock for Illuminate, and so we ended up going uh, with the Illuminate license today, and it actually went not too bad, but we had quite a few people that had audio problems, and I think the reason might be, uh, I don't know what the normal attendance that, or numbers that they have in the system, but we, we probably just had a few too many numbers, because as the numbers increased, there seemed to be more people complaining about possible uh, issues with audio. So that's where we are. We've got an audio issue. We, we have a few potential options that might resolve it with either directly with... Uh, uh, you know, someone else who has a license, but you know, we're we're searching for solutions, and and uh, when uh, Mr. I wear awesome badges stapled to my chest, Jim Groom contacted us and said, "Hey, we might have an option." We, of course, were quite eager to pursue it. At least, to, at least, if nothing else, just to have a good chat. So, if I understand correctly, then the goal is you've got a presenter that's got slides. Um, you've got a presenter that's probably got slides. At some point, do you all take questions? Is the goal that you can have a back and forth audio between people? Or is, I mean, because I know one of the criticisms was that, you know, some mechanisms are more broadcasting. And so speak to that a little bit. Steven, I think you were trying to talk. Well, I'd like to. Uh, faintly, but yeah, you're yeah, coming through. You're coming through. Yeah, I'm hearing you. There's a bit of an audio video delay here, uh, video delay when you speak, so it takes about five seconds gotcha. before it catches up. Oh, you're probably. Are you watching it in the uh, on the web page, George? Or just I'm in Google Hangouts, but I have. The I'm same in Google lag. Hangouts, but I have the same lag. Well, not just with you. I mean, when they're. Well, not just with you. I mean, when they're speaking, there's a bit of a lag, and uh, yeah. Closer to them, I guess, uh, you're closer to them, I guess, geographically. You you have your very own political <laughs> wings, Stephen, all by yourself. I'm really trying to figure out why my uh, audio is faint, because it really shouldn't be faint. And, you know, I'm getting 
getting up to seven, eight bars on one tree, sometimes more on, uh, on my volume out. So is there, isn't there the input for him? Or no, that's all going for the it same. It should all be on the same. It wouldn't be a setting on my side as far as making one person quieter than the other. That well, I and if, if George is getting, if, if he's getting a, a light it's volume two. Too. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, when, here's what we thought, and we'll, I guess yeah. we'll look at that audio issue, uh, Stephen. You let us know if it changes at all, but one of the things we thought is that if you wanted to, with your site, whether it would be too broadcasty or not, I know Stephen had said that when he was doing his Google Plus post, and one of the things is we kind of play with the idea of broadcasting. Like the idea that you can, through that Google Hangout, also share a presentation, also share a place where you kind of share your screen. Um, but we were hoping that if you guys were interested in playing with this, that we could help you produce it so that not only do you have an experience where people could interact over the chat or even using like DS106 radio or some radio station, have them call in and have a call in session where people who are in there call in to take answers and experiment with that. But also when the whole thing is over, have a neat kind of resource that can go right up to YouTube, Blip TV, whatever. And then you have these great sessions that you're going to be doing for 30 weeks, really chronicled as a series of episodes in that change. And I don't know how well that is working in terms of Illuminate or uh, Views is the other one you were using, or Fuse. However, like, but I think it would be cool to kind of produce these episodes for the MOOC so that you really have this great resource because I know you and Stephen have both said that one of the ideas of the Change MOOC is to create a series of resources that other people use in their class. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I think is going to help out from a bandwidth standpoint and maybe the issue that you're running into now is it seems like with a lot of these programs and software when you get a ton of people in any pe one piece of software bandwidth is just very constrained um, and so it seems like that's the point at which things start messing up and one thing that would help with this is that it breaks out two things so we would be doing the broadcasting and we would have a one-on-one -on -one thing with or you know one to a few of you all like you and the presenter right and so like it's just the presenter and maybe you in Google Hangout and that way we've got video of you uh, with this Hangout feature you can also add the slides in now so they can put their presentation into Google Docs um, so they can do their whole presentation there and we're broadcasting that back out the back channel happens on our website and then all of this gets streamed through an Amazon EC2 instance and we can actually up the bandwidth on that very easily um, it's on the lowest one right now, but I think it can pretty much handle any sort of load. Yeah. I mean... The Amazon EQ, that's audio and yes. video. Yes, yeah, so it's broadcasting the audio and the video all as one package, and then we're also recording it on the computer right now. So we'll get a HD quality QuickTime file at the end of this broadcast. Yeah, and the thing is, and, and I'm one still thing that, down. So yeah, still we're, we're still that. having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Um, but the. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I'm, yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I think, in the same boat as uh, the boys at uh, DTLT. <laughs> um, your audio isn't coming through tremendously clear. It's very quiet. Um, yeah. So, anyway, I hear I hear them fine, and I hear you as well. But it is. I wonder, it is definitely Stephen, quiet. could you jump out of the hangout and come back in and see if that makes any difference? I don't Try. know. I don't know if it would or not, but that seems one way it could do it. Yeah. So, and this idea came to me, George, just to say is it didn't come to me. Me and Alan had read your post in the Manden in Kazabava, <laughs> and we were like, you know, this sucks. Like, they're trying to do this. They have this thing lined up with 30 great speakers, if that, if more, maybe, and that they're having problems with this, and that's a quick way to kill it, like you said in your post. So we were thinking if it's once a week where you produce this video, and we can help you with the setup we have because it helps us experiment with it, it helps us innovate around it, and hopefully it will help you produce this in such a way that people can say, okay, here's our episode, here's our site, come hear the video where Martin Weller talked about digital scholarship, and you'll hear the back and forth, and then you'll also have the resources right beneath there to follow up on that week's project. It just seems to me that broadcasting has its limitations. I understand where Stephen's coming from, 
but I wonder if we can kind of experiment with the broadcasting and the interaction. Like Timmy Boy had kind of experimented with the idea of having people tweet, like at Change Mook, and that tweet would show up on the screen so that you could see right. what people were tweeting at that moment. Like there is ways to make your broadcast more interactive and kind of experiment around it. And we're willing. Um, I know that I'm don't want to volunteer everyone and Timmy Boy has expressed interest, but like we're willing to do it, experiment with it, and share you everything we did. So you could try it and experiment it with you whenever you right. want to break free of us. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I think. Yeah, one you know, and, and I, I think you know, one of the things I, like to be honest, things that I most like about it is being able to bring together these. Uh, I mean, you know, ride a little bit on the coattails of the work that you've done with uh, DTLT. Is there a way to pronounce that? That's Datlat. That yeah, one student <laughs> pronounced it Datlat, so you can. <laughs> but DTLT yeah. is fine too. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, I think that would be the part that I'm almost most interested in, is just being able to, anytime you can do interesting stuff with interesting and creative people, that's the reward in itself. So I think that would be my first, you know, that'd be an automatic satisfactory outcome. Um, I like the fact that this is more conversational. There's a bit, it's a bit more multimedia, you know, the visual component is there as well. So I think that's a big plus. Um, so what I'm just thinking out loud here and, and waiting until Stephen comes back in um, and have a chat with Dave, obviously, but it might be an idea if we tried, let's say there's one session where the speaker does their token slides, right? This is sort of the, this is what we're doing and we could do that in, uh, I don't know, whatever tool, if we get Illuminate working or something like that. Uh, but what I like here is this is a, it's far more personable or in sort of more of a discussion format here, you know, yeah. Oprah's couch. You guys look like the <laughs> That's what we're going for. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, that's the first thought I would so, have. So, I mean, that's the first thought I would have is, is it would be neat to play around with And the with other thing that that's end. interesting is the experimenting you could do, you know, as we figure this out and we talk about it with bringing video in, with sharing your screen, your, your desktop through uh, Google Hangout or Google Plus. I mean, you, there, I mean, I'd be interested to see what it looks like for you to share a presentation right now mm -hmm. or to share your screen, like how that affects the bandwidth and stuff. Like just to see, you know, if we have a relatively yeah. seamless setup, we'd just be behind the curtains and I'd work with Timmy and Andy to kind of produce it. And I think it would be a blast. Mm -hmm. Think about it, like we're producing Change MOOC, which is kind of showing how the whole web works. No, I mean, absolutely, and I think, like no, I, I said, that, that definitely would be in itself. Just the fact that you're playing around with stuff would be would be interesting. Now, let me just, you know, bring up a share screen, and hopefully I can bring up my presentation. Does that work out? All right, so let me just get the right, oh, this is the one here. So I'll just bring this up here. It's a presentation that I uh, did in Sweden recently. So uh, I'm assuming you guys see this here. Uh, I'm not sure if I should share it. this broad. Does that matter? Does that make? I would make it full screen so we could see it. Yeah, we see all the extra slides to the left. Yeah, I've got it full screen. Yeah, I've got it full screen here, but apparently you're not getting the full screen. Yeah, right view, now we're right? still seeing the PowerPoint. Yeah, we're seeing the interface. surroundings. There you go. Okay, so if I move down to that, I mean, it's going to change, but you don't get the full right. view because when I change it to the full screen view, it doesn't adjust. automatically now, one adjust. One thing that I noticed was that it, this Hangout also has Google Docs integration. So I wonder if the presentation was in Google Docs. I saw that it lets you move between your slides directly within the interface, and it was automatically ah, full okay. screen. Which might ah, be nice. Okay. Steven, can we hear you? Okay. Okay. All right. Hey. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, gotcha. to, there we go. Using a different you sound microphone. awesome. Yeah. So I, I think awesome. well, I sound <laughs> awesome. Well, that's good. I <laughs> think the, uh, the uh, almost $200 yeah, microphone, $200 microphone Hangouts, doesn't work the, uh, in Google Hangouts, but the, uh, the, the $5 works tin fine. pot <laughs> then works fine. It reminds me of, yeah. what is it? Um, that Brian Alexander's rule of hotel wireless, where the cheaper the hotel, the better the wireless is going to be. <laughs> so you're using your Super 8 mic instead yeah. of the <laughs> right. Heil microphone. There you go. Yeah. So, Steve. Yeah. I, I blame Google Hangouts because that microphone really is a beautiful it microphone. Well it works else. very and this, well. And this is else. the beta version of the Hangout, the one that offers the screen sharing and stuff. And that's what George is right. playing around with right now, is sharing right. slides on his screen and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and we were wondering. Yeah, now I'm just, now I'm just around, cause I'm as I switch around because I'm busy doing email and other things. All you see is just the slides. Is yeah, that that's all the only that they're thing that's showing up for us right now is the slides. Okay. 
Okay. Well, on the, oh, that's in, in, the, okay. in the thumb the problem, here. you see, you see the, the thumbnail slide. I see the uh, slide the index side. on the left hand side. I see all of your control. Or, uh, yeah, we're not seeing the full bars. screen. Yeah. So I'm seeing the application. So I'm seeing the application, yeah. not just the slide. I wonder if that will be different yeah. when we try Google Docs. Okay. Well, I think that, that it's, it's easy enough to use. I think what we might want to do, and I, this is just something I was mentioning too, uh, just as you were busy getting your $5 mic working, Stephen, was uh, maybe what we should do. This is a more of a discussion, interactive session. If we have some options with Illumina, I just sent you a link. I got an email from from a potential dedicated server or host with Illuminate that uh, we can look at for the presenters each week. Because we, one thing we're looking at is we're going to have different skill levels yeah. with different presenters. Illuminate might be a nice, this week we'll do uh, Illuminate presentation, and then we'll do, let's say, a Friday or whatever weekly wrap-up in this format, which is uh, more discussion-based, and hopefully we can bring in our weekly guest speakers and get them to experiment. I don't know, what, what's your take on that? I like the mix. Um, uh, I do like to illuminate, and one of the things with illuminate is uh, traditional academics feel very comfortable in it because it does what they normally do. Uh, it lets them get on and do a slideshow presentation. Maybe it lets them do that a little bit too easily because uh, they they fall into that. Uh, but I also like this. I like this format. Uh, Dave Cormier, if he was here, would be saying, as he said to me the other day, "Look, we've done." 50 1500 episodes of Ed Tech Talk, and the format we use is live stream and, and Google Hangouts or Skype or whatever right. for the conversation. And and, then uh, and and that's basically what we're doing here, right? It is the same sort of thing, except we're not broadcasting out with live stream. We're broadcasting out with something else, uh, which you know, none of us can afford, but they have there. So. Here's, um, here's the interesting thing about that live streaming thing that we're using right now is it's actually not expensive at all. That Amazon EC2 instance, you turn on when you need to go live, and it's 15 cents an hour, and you only pay right. for when you're using it. So I've actually... 15 cents a what? 15, 15, 15 cents, cents a what? per Minute? hour. So we've been doing all of our live streaming for our daily podcasts, and it costs us about 8 US dollars per month. Yeah. And oh, 50, five, zero, 50, five, zero, oh, 15, cents per one, hour. Five. 15, That's one, five. Oh, one five. Yeah. Yes. Oh, one five. Yeah. That's, unlimited, That's even better. Uh, That's unlimited uh, it, it viewers. Is, um, that's the low end on the bandwidth wise. We've never tested needing to up it. They have small, mm. medium, and large instances, so you can have oh, basically a virtual private server oh, that can handle more connections. Um, I think the small instance handles up to 150 connections, and we've never had to use a medium or a large. I think the medium and the large, it gets into like the 30 or 40 cents range, yeah. and then the large one right. is like 80 cents an right. hour maybe. And but again, it's only when, yeah, and it's only when you're using bad, it, yeah. so you can turn it off and not use it, <laughs> which is great. And when we actually the exper the where the expensive things come in is probably with the camera we got. And the Wirecast software is what we're playing around to do the kind of like TV stuff. Mm -hmm. But what interests me about this is like we've been able to get away from yeah. doing ads, so we don't have to run the ads on. And when we finish it, it actually uploads to Blip, YouTube, and an MP3 high quality version right away. So when we were talking to George earlier, it's kind of nice to have those kind of ongoing episodes automatically update and maybe a site or just use YouTube or whatever to have them all there and have them kind of produced because I remember you said George uh, Stephen in your uh, Google Plus post that hey you know I don't want it to be too broadcasty I want it to have that kind of classroom feel and I'm wondering if the broadcast feel yeah. if we can find interaction around it and like you said Jeff Lebo and um, Dave Cormier have been doing great stuff with this is to kind of produce it a little bit so we would kind of like to get in there and try and produce a show and make it look like a show. An intro, you go in there and you kind of, maybe that's too much, but I kind of love the idea of making it like a, produ a produced thing. And I would say that, I mean, this system as it stands right now, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what we can play with to make it easier for the presenter. So right now, you know, we handle everything in terms of video switching, making sure their slides show up, make sure their video shows up and everything. So then it just becomes a question of how do they get that to us. Um, and we can, we can pull in anything that we can see on a desktop here on our network. So I can have a laptop running, looking at something, and then pull that in. That's how this Google Plus 
uh, Hangout is showing up through this right. live stream. It's just another computer right. that's running it, right. and the audio comes through and the video comes through. So, you know, whether that be Skype or with screen sharing, or whether that be a Google Hangout with the Google Docs integration, and they're showing their presentation from there, um, it's pretty flexible in terms of how we can get the stuff from them so that, you know, we can, and that's something, you know, that we can play around with. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it'd be great to see. I mean, I mean, there's a few points, you know, Jim's saying, you know, are we overdoing it a little bit if, you know, if it's sort of a produced show? And I think that's, I, mean, I think that's exactly what I'd like to see is, is uh, you know, different people are going to have different focuses and different skills that they bring to the table. And you guys got, uh, you know, with uh, the work that you've been doing here with these live sessions, you're building a sort of a, I don't know, a brand and a sort of skill sets that relate to it. I think it'd be awesome if we could take, you know, advantage of the stuff that you are doing developing expertise in and we can sort of mash it up with some of the things that we're engaged in. I think it's, you know, it's, it's great to see experimentation at any level. So I'm all in. Um, I'm sort of in. I, I like the concept. The one thing that I'm a bit concerned about now is the, uh, yeah. the chat room. Um, well, I also use the, the IRC chat with Ed Radio. And, and even though I've got, and it, open I've got it open here, although now I'm not in it at the moment, flaky. it's yeah. a bit yep. flaky. Yeah. We agree. Um, so that, that's, so one issue. That, that's one issue, and I'm going to pop into it here. Uh, and the, the other issue is that um, we're not seeing the chat. Uh, you know, the running conversation the, uh, in the uh, broadcast and it, yeah, archive. Yeah, that's something that we could pull in if we wanted to. So again, if I had the IRC, it's open on a computer, so I can pull that window into the broadcast if we want to do it. We've done that before. We've experimented both with pulling a chat in and also pulling in uh, Twitter messages with certain hashtags, yeah. uh, and that works yeah. as well. Um, so, And we can do either. It's just, uh, you know, you always have to balance, like, how much information you put on a screen. So it's like trying yeah. to find a place for the chat in addition yep. to the video and stuff. But and it could definitely work. And, Stephen, I was wondering if you'd be interested in this because this is something Grant Potter's working on that it's kind of – it's really interesting, and I wonder how it's going to work. It's kind of like an open – Anything Grant Potter's working <laughs> Absolutely. on. Absolutely. That guy's a genius. <laughs> and so he basically is working on this PBX exchange where you have a party line. So people can call in either on an 800 number or on a on a phone, a smartphone, whatever, with this little application called Linphone, I think it's called. And they have mm -hmm. basically called 106, but it doesn't have to be DS106. It can be anything yeah. we set up. Yeah. And it's a party line where people, yeah. maybe you say, okay, we want to have question and answer now. Let's open up the party line. And you could get you know, 10, 15 people on there. There had to be some protocol for when to speak, but it could be a really easy way to yeah. kind of say, like, come to the mic. It's a it's a private yeah. server running asterisks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a who server? It's a, it's a who it, server? I think it's a virtual private server. Yeah. Isn't it? It's a virtual private server that's running asterisks. So uh, A S T E R I X. Yes. A S T E R I X. Yeah, so it's so basically a voice over IP solution and he's actually even going to tie in an eight 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 number for that anyone in North America could call into <laughs> and be on the same yeah. Voice of voice line that anybody running the application runs. So there's. Yeah. Does North America mean, yeah. North, does North, America America mean North America, America or does North America? I think it means North mean America, as far as I understand. Yeah. Because Grand Potter's <laughs> behind it. Yeah, right. <laughs> if we were behind it, it would probably mean the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I've got the wrong asterisk here. It must yes. Be I got asterisk the comic. Uh, and uh, Susan Morgan good. says that my chat window is a, is below the screen, making it a little bit more yeah. awkward to watch both. And that's all HTML. We can figure out the layout yeah. and that kind of stuff yeah. and play around with that well, kind of stuff. This, uh, well, how about this uh, for a suggestion? Then let's let's try this. I mean, uh, next week we've got awesome. David Wiley on, and so I'm wondering if we try initially. Let's. I mean, he's a great guy to experiment with because he's he's uh, yeah. technically quite proficient so maybe we see if on Friday uh, I can follow up with him if you guys are okay with it but the next Friday we try a session like this just to experiment with it we can do an earlier in the week illuminate session with uh, with David for some of the reasons that Stephen mentioned which is there are people
people who are more comfortable with, uh, um, you know, the, the Illuminate format. And we can sort of base it, you know, we can throw it out to each of our uh, keynotes or our weekly facilitators. If they want to do it, the session during the week, that'd be wonderful to have them in. But if they aren't able to do it, uh, we can just sort of get together as a crew here and uh, just have a chat. I mean, on my end, I think that would be a good way to start. What, what do you guys think on that? I love it. Sounds great. Yeah, we'd be happy to help. I mean, and it would help us because we've been experimenting with the stuff and it gives us a real kind of mm -hmm. real yeah. use case to play with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if nothing else, I'm interested in knowing what the upper limits of the streaming software is when you have a small Amazon yeah. instance and stuff. So getting yeah. a lot of people in there and basically yeah. trying to crash it, trying to make it struggle would be good so that we have an idea of what it can handle. Now, can, I'm not too worried about it, but... You can, know. You ch can you change, I mean, say we reach yeah. that, that upper limit, can you change that on the fly? It, Does I would it have automatically to kick over? Start a new instance, so we'd have to. Enter your phone, George. Enter your phone, George. George. That's actually it's Jim's phone. That's Jim's phone. <laughs> But um, yeah, if we if I had to up the instance, I would just have to stop broadcasting, turn on a, on a larger instance, and then start broadcasting yeah. again. So okay. there would be like, you know, two minutes of downtime. But then we, you know, then we'd know once whether we've reached that limit exactly. very quickly. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. We've we well, uh, I've learned from experience that you know once over and over. And over, and over, and over. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> Now we we need to check this with Dave Cormier as well, George. Um, I don't think he'll have an objection. He'll probably be into trying something new. Um, he's been pretty good so far. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. just really a way to say yeah. we're, we love what you do, and we're just gonna we'd love to experiment along with you if it's possible. Yeah. It's a, it's a big old yeah. digital group. It's a, it's a big old digital right. group hug. Exactly. So uh, I think it would be a neat experience if we can get. And again, you're right, Stephen. We have to sort of see what Dave's thoughts are on it. Yeah. Uh, but I think the best thing to do. I mean, you really have to just try and play and experiment and poke around, and uh, you'll find out what works. And I think what's nice about this is, first of all, it's more open, uh, and we have a little more control over it than the experience we've had so far. Secondly, what I, I most like about it is actually there's just you know talking Grant Potter's playing around with this as an option, and uh, the crew out at uh, DTLT are doing that and we're doing, you know, it's just, you, you get more collision of ideas and people building on each other's ideas when you start to experiment this way. Yeah, and that, that's nothing but good. Uh, the only, uh, the other thing I'd ask too, and this is more of a personal request, is to uh, be in the know on all of the tech details. So like, yeah. What are you using? Uh, what's, the you know, what, what's the setup? What's the configuration? Can yeah. I go in and look at it? Uh, can I write an API to it? Like the big blue button, I wrote an API right into Grasshopper for it. Uh, you know, I want to be able as much as possible to do that. Uh, with the chat as well, um, long term, I'm not going to be happy going with the IRC. Uh, the IRC is flaky. Also, the IRC doesn't bring in the Twitter conversation. If possible, I want to, um, I have a, a chat system of my own in Grasshopper that I use, which isn't bad. The big problem with it is that it used to hook into Twitter, but now it doesn't. So I need to reintegrate it into Twitter. Um, yeah, and so, and actually, any chat window that integrates into Twitter would probably be fine. It doesn't have to be mine, but it, the the IRC solution isn't yeah. going to work long term. Uh, I've tried that. The IRC it's for me was just a short term real solution for me to get some sort of web based embed yep. thing that would work pretty seamlessly um, for us yeah. for the time being. But if you've got something yeah. more robust or we can play around with whatever, I'm open to it definitely. And wow, so the live streaming software does have an API. I would love for you to start tinkering in there. Um, it, if you search for Wowza, W-O-W-Z-A, um, you can find information on it. I've got a blog post I'll send you as well where I sort of outline when we started doing this, how I've been setting it up. Um, but I can definitely give you all the details on it. Yep. Yeah, And the idea, Stephen, was that we do this with the idea of showing you how we do it. If you like it, um, we'll blog it, or Timmy and Andy really are the ones who will blog <laughs> it, and actually say, hey, here's how we do it, and you go and run with it, set it up yourself at any point. I yeah. mean, it just helps us figure oh, yeah. out what's possible. Oh, yeah, right. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. so, so this is a Wasa Media yeah. Server, so you guys are running oh, on Amazon. Amazon. Oh, on Amazon, I guess. Yeah. Right. You're running it on, is that right? Yeah, yeah that's it's right. it's running Arden? on Amazon, so we pay... 
It's a five dollar a right. month subscription fee to have access to those instances, and then the fifteen cents an hour to actually run them. So we just turn it on when we need to stream and shut it back off when we're not. Yeah. And so in terms of your fifteen cents. And so in terms of your fifteen cents an hour, have you ever? I, I mean, does it go up based on? And you probably chatted about this earlier, but in terms of. You know, once you do a certain a certain amount of bandwidth, what's your limit that you're hitting if you get you know five thousand people attending? Which you won't, not they, with our course, but they charge still. they charge something for bandwidth, but it's somewhere in the in the realm of like for each terabyte of bandwidth that you broadcast out or something. So we haven't ran into issues with it yet. But again, with the Amazon instances, it's one of those things where you almost have to watch it as it goes because you know it, they might tell you, oh well. Well, for every 10 gigs of bandwidth you use, you'll charge 50 cents. And so it's like, well, what does that mean? In, you know, what, what does that mean in real terms? I don't know. You know, it's like if I have five people watching me, does that mean I get charged 50 cents? Or if I have 5,000 yeah. people, does that mean I get yeah. charged 50 cents? Yeah. You never really know. Exactly. So uh, as of yet, we haven't had, you know, tons of viewers, but we're also doing it daily. And it's on for at least an hour, sometimes more when I'm tinkering with it. Um, you know, but we don't have nearly the bandwidth that we would have with change. We can monitor that on a daily basis and see what the usage is on it. Uh, but it is that's one of the things with Amazon is that it can be difficult to know what the real cost is going to be up front because everything is just sort of these modular charges that are that seem very small until you extrapolate it onto very large, um, you know, instances like the change thing would be. So we'll have to see. Yeah. Yep. And the change is happening once a week mainly. Right. So we're having the every day. And I mean, if it does, it'd be interesting when you hit a thousand users or whatever, what that would mean. I'm game to find out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll just send you the bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, uh, All right. Well, uh, I think uh, you know. Let's uh, follow up. I guess I've got. Uh, Jim's uh, email info here, so we can follow right. up on that. But I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do this. But we just need to give yeah. this uh, formal blessing. Yeah, yeah, it's important. There are three of us. We all got to decide as as a unit, subsuming ourselves. <laughs> you love that, don't you, Dems? <laughs> That's your favorite way to roll. Soon you'll be saying groups are good. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, guys. So then just let us know about Wiley. We'd love to set it up for next week. Okay, good. As soon as I hear back right. from David, we'll let you Take know. Take care, guys. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you. Really appreciate Take it. Take care. Right. See ya. All, all right. right. Awesome. And thank you all for watching DTLT yeah. today. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and close it down. But It's a good session. Yeah. It really worked well. It did. It was. Like George said, it was conversation. I mean, let's have a little outro talk about what we thought before we close it well i mean i just just watching it and, and and having someone like like dave who hasn't who wasn't a participant if he watches this show you know he'll see the he'll kind of interaction that. Uh, that that was that we were able to kind of pull off here with this and yeah. um i think you know. that's that's one of the beauties of why i love wirecast is that you get that hd quality video that's a recording of what just happened right. and whereas with illuminate when you try to go back and watch the stuff it yeah. can be a little bit difficult do you still have to download the plugin make all of that work whereas with this it's web-based video and it works on ios devices it yeah. works you know you can pull it in as a podcast it's it's yeah. web-based that's one of so. the benefits of the broadcasting element whereas i could see it would not be so good in terms of the teaching like you'd want more interaction but sure. there is another side to the broadcasting and how you bring that interaction through chat yeah. twitter or whatever or having your phone ring <laughs> and it's like them <laughs> One answer your damn phone. <laughs> it's, on, it's on campus, so it's not the Downs told me to answer yeah. the phone. I know. Now I feel like I have well, to. Well, I think he was, I think he wanted to dig into George, probably. That's right. He was going after. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, awesome. We'll be following up and keep an eye on it. Yeah. Thanks for fun. watching DTLT today. Thanks Take for care, joining everybody. us. Bye. Take care, everybody. Take care. Thank you.